Welcome back to GCN Racing and highlights of the 99th edition of the Trey Valley Barazzini, the race first held all the way back in 1919. This morning the riders set off from Sarono and headed northwestwards over the 199 kilometer route, eventually traversing to the finish in Varese where they would tackle five short loops and two longer ones. It's a traditional looking parkour for an Italian one day classic, not mountainous by any means but certainly hilly enough for the climbers to have an opportunity to attack and for the group to whittle down significantly. We're going to join the action with just over 60 k's to go, a group of three out front by this point with a 1 minute and 18 second advantage over the peloton. Michael Gogol of Trek Segafredo, Davide Ballerini of Astana and Harada on the back there for Kofidis. As they came to the start of the final two laps, their advantage was down to just over a minute, whilst behind Jumbo Visma were hard at work on the front, and presumably full of confidence after that win of Primoz Roglic last weekend in the Giro della Miglia. Roglic would be their captain again today, but he'd face some stiff competition from the likes of Valverde, Nibali and Fulsang. Hirata would be dropped on the climb a few kilometres later, leaving us with just two out front, but here's a man that likes to go long. Tim Wellens is the first of the big favourites to make a move, choosing the more solar climb upon which to do it. He didn't get particularly far, but his effort was enough to see a number of riders drop from the back of the group. Also particularly active in the race were the likes of David Godu, here in the white, red and blue of Groupama FTJ, and George Bennett of Jumbo Visma, who's having a very strong end to his season. One man who's having a bit of a disappointing season by his standards is Dan Martin. This is him heading across to the front of the race, and that would be the start of the formation of a very strong group of riders. Also in there amongst others were Valverde and Formolo, Spanish and Italian national champions respectively, Eddie Dunbar of Ineos, Luis Leon Santos of Astana, and Mike Woods of EF. Coming into the final lap, they clawed out a gap of close to 30 seconds to the chase group behind, being led by this point by Latvian national champion Tom Schoins. That chase brought the gap down significantly, to the point where a number of riders decided to try and jump across on their own. Sensing the impending catch, Sanchez decided it was time to go alone, attacking with 22 kilometers to go and quickly opening a gap to the group he'd been in. And here are a few of the riders attempting to get across, Vincenzo Nibli bridging a gap to Molima and Aberasturi, and they would soon make their way across to the group of Valverde. By this point though, Sanchez had well and truly flown the nest, enjoying a 20 second advantage over the group of favourites behind. However, with still 18 kilometres remaining, he'd be hard pushed to hold them up all by himself. That said, he was helped reasonably significantly by this. The group was directed the wrong way by a race official's motorbike, forcing them all to do a U-turn in the road. Not only did they lose a big chunk of time, they also lost a lot of momentum and cohesion. It was a disaster. Not often you see this happen at a top level bike race, but the frustration was understandable. Nibli literally up in arms about it. Sanchez though had his own problems to deal with. Here he is skillfully dodging a car that had randomly decided to stop in the middle of the road. With 10 k's to go, Sanchez was over half a minute clear, but behind Jumbo Visma had started to organise a chase. However, as you can see from the graphic, the group of Nibli had lost so much time with that wrong turn that they'd rejoined the race well behind what was now the second group. Ineos were also particularly motivated to chase the Spaniard down. With 6 kilometres to go, it was down to just 10 seconds between Sanchez and those behind. And then with 1 kilometre to go, his dream was shattered. Moscon flying straight past him, but with Jakob Fulsang for company, it wasn't over yet for Astana. Also up there was Pierre Latour of age 2 r and eventually Roglic himself. He took a couple of deep breaths as he got on the back, but as soon as he'd composed himself, he was off. An initially seated acceleration followed by an all-out-of-the-saddle sprint, and he was gone. Nobody behind willing or maybe able to chase, and with just a few hundred metres remaining, only disaster was going to stop the Jumbo Visma rider taking his second one-day win in just four days. And so he did it. A quick glance over his shoulder and he knew that he'd won his second race. Behind, Giovanni Visconti sprinted the second, just ahead of Schoins, Vendrami and Higita. Well, this man is certainly a favourite now for Il Lombardia on Saturday, isn't he? You can join us then for highlights of that race on GCN Racing. We're also going to have highlights tomorrow of Milano-Torino and on Thursday of the Gran Piemonte. We hope you'll have your company then.